Hello, my name is Kyle Madsen, and this is my Capstone Project. For this project, I decided to do an expository talk on the first 50 years of church history, that being from the time of the Ascension of Christ all the way to the death of the Apostle Paul. A uh, little disclaimer, for this video I will not be making great eye contact like I am right now with the camera because I will be having to read off of the script that I created because it's kind of hard to memorize 2,000 words, for me at least. Um, but yeah, let's begin. What happened to the Church of Christendom within the first 50 years after the Ascension of Christ? You've heard about the story of Jesus, right? The Bible, being the most widely distributed book of all time and being from the Middle Eastern portion of the world, teaches that God manifested himself in the form of a man, namely Jesus. He lived a sinless life, performed many seemingly impossible feats, and most importantly, died on the cross for the atonement of all the elect. Three days later, he rose from the grave after enduring the penalty for the guilt of all who are saved. He then ascended into heaven 40 days after his resurrection, kicking off the history of the church. But that was over 2,000 years ago. What happened between then and now? How did the church get where it is today? After all, Christianity is the most widely practiced religion worldwide. Well, luckily, people tend to write important stuff down, so we have a pretty clear visual of church history. In this talk, we will be looking at the first 50 years after the Ascension of Christ, particularly focusing on the narrative of the Book of Acts and following the life of the Apostle Paul. Right, so, before the church was born, Jerusalem was a part of the Roman Empire with a population of roughly 8,000 citizens. During this time, a man named Jesus began to attract some attention for his miraculous acts and surprising claims about himself, religion, and God. During this time, the Jews were awaiting the Messianic King promised by Old Covenant prophets. Jesus, a lowly carpenter, claiming to be their promised Messiah, this offended the Jews greatly as they saw him as a radical blasphemer. Because of this, Jesus was executed by Roman officials by crucifixion on the cross. Jesus came back to life three days later, revealing himself to his apostles and then to many other witnesses, quote, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, end quote. Acts 1 verse 3. Jesus tells his followers to, quote, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, end quote. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. He also gives them instructions to stay in Jerusalem until, quote, you have been clothed with power from on high, end quote. Luke 24, verse 49. Jesus also tells his disciples that he would be leaving for a time. Shortly after this, he is seen ascending into heaven by a cloud of light. After Jesus departs, the apostles stay in the city, waiting for the feast of Pentecost, which is nine days to come. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes upon the apostles like a wind, and flames appear over their heads. They begin to declare the gospel in languages they didn't even know to all these people who are gathered in Jerusalem from all over the world. At this event, quote, those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls, end quote, Acts 2, verse 41. This is the clothing of power from on high that Jesus told his apostles about. This event is known as the birth of the New Covenant Church, the beginning of church history. From there, the apostles continued to declare the gospel throughout Jerusalem, leading thousands to Christianity and forming new communities of believers. The new community of Christians began to gather daily in the courts of the temple and one another's houses. The apostles heal people and perform miraculous events in the temple courts for the purpose of attesting to the divinity of the gospel. However, remember, many of the Jews didn't like Jesus. After all, they did kill him. So they, they really didn't like seeing all this commotion after they thought they had been rid of him. Because of their disdain for the new sect of Judaism, the temple leaders arrest the apostles for teaching and healing in the courts. But every time, they are freed by the angel of the Lord. As Christianity is growing in Jerusalem, the apostles appoint seven leaders to better spread the gospel, as well as to deal with issues of negligence toward the poor. One of these new leaders is Stephen, a bold man, quote, full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, end quote, Acts 6, verse 5. Stephen gets arrested by the temple leaders and accused of speaking against the temple. In response, Stephen gives a great speech about how Israel's leaders have repetitively rejected the messengers sent by God, the greatest example being Christ. The leaders of the temple become furious and stone Stephen to death, beginning a movement of persecution towards Christianity that would continue to this very day. Because of this heavy oppression towards the followers of Jesus, many Christians are driven out of Jerusalem. However, this turns out to be only beneficial towards the cause of Christ. As the apostles and disciples of Christ are scattered throughout Judea, Samaria, and the neighboring countries, they continue to declare the gospel to the people of the lands, further spreading it. 
It is around this time when Saul, a Pharisee who was utterly opposed to Christianity and who witnessed the stoning of Stephen, is traveling on the road to Damascus in order to persecute them there. While traveling to Damascus, Jesus reveals himself to Saul, convicting him of the wrong he was waging against the risen Christ. Saul then becomes an avid Christian, dedicating his life for the purpose of furthering the kingdom of God. Next, Peter, one of the apostles, has an important vision in which God reveals to him the fulfillment of ceremonial and civil law. In Judaism at this time, it was believed that non-Jewish people were not clean and unworthy of being in the family of God. This was based on the misunderstanding of the command of God to separate the Canaanites from the Israelites when they were being led into the Promised Land. This is also the end point of the Old Testament dietary laws. From here, Peter is led to the house of a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius. He tells him in his household about the gospel and they all believe and are overcome by the Holy Spirit, just like at Pentecost. But this time, it was the Gentiles and not Jews. This was a huge turning point in early Christendom. It is after all these things that the first Christian church building is established. It is built in the third largest city of the Roman Empire, Antioch. Barnabas, a Jewish church leader, and Saul, now called Paul, leads this new church community in Antioch. It is from here that the followers in Antioch are coined Christians for the first time, and also from here that the first Christian missionaries are sent off. After leading the church in Antioch to a level of maturity, Paul and some of his partners traveled to different cities throughout the Roman Empire, building churches and teaching people of the good news. Each time Paul and his co-workers come into a new city, they go first to the Jewish synagogues to tell the Jewish leaders about Jesus and also about the fulfillment of the ceremonial law. Many respond well to this news coming to the faith, whereas some seek the life of Paul for rebelling against the Torah. From here, Paul and his co-workers venture on three missionary journeys. And faithful obedience to Jesus' command in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. Quote, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. End quote. First, they travel to cities in Asia Minor, after which the apostles meet up and have a meeting in Jerusalem. Second, Paul and his partners go back through Asia Minor and then to Greece. They then go on a third journey back through Asia Minor and Greece to establish and foster the churches brought up. Now, keep in mind, the Christian faith doesn't share similar values nor culture with Greece or Rome at the time. And with Paul going around announcing that Jesus is the risen king of the world, suspicions of treason and rebellion arise. Because of this, many claim that these Christians are rebellious towards the Roman Empire and what it stood for. Paul is arrested multiple times by the Roman officials due to these claims, but every time they arrest and question him, they find no real threat simply dismissing the case. The other apostles had also been building up churches and going on mission trips and writing letters, such as 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, James, and 1st, 2nd Peter. As Paul arrives in Jerusalem after his fourth and final journey, he faces opposition yet again. He is attacked by Jewish leaders who claim he has defiled the temple. This gets the Roman officials' attention who think that Paul is an Egyptian terrorist trying to begin a rebellion against Rome. Paul gets arrested and put on trial before the leaders of the Sanhedrin, who put Paul in the barracks after the Pharisees and Sadducees disagree on whether Paul is guilty or not. Paul is then escorted by a small army to appear before Felix, the Roman governor of Judea. Felix could not decide and delayed a final decision as Paul made a good defense. Felix tells the centurions that, quote, he should be kept in custody but have some liberty, and that none of his friends should be prevented from attending to his needs, end quote, Acts 24, verse 23. After two years in the barracks, Felix is succeeded by Porcius Festus. Festus and Agrippa, being the king of Samaria, hold the trial with Paul. King Agrippa concludes, this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment, Acts 26, verse 31. Because of the vast claims that the Jews were accusing Paul of, the two agreed to send them to appear before Caesar in Rome. Remember, they're in Jerusalem. The voyage doesn't go so well as they run out of food before becoming shipwrecked on an island called Malta after enduring a terrible storm. They are helped by the natives of the island and eventually set sail again to Rome. In Rome, Paul awaits his trial before Caesar Nero, who had recently succeeded Julius Caesar. While awaiting his case, Paul is on house arrest in Rome. At this point, it is around 61 AD. While under house arrest, Paul writes letters to the Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, and to Philemon, which can be found in the New Testament canon today. In the year 63 AD, Paul is acquitted from jail. Paul then goes to visit his brothers in Macedonia and Asia Minor. At this point, the book of Acts ends, leaving some questions of Paul's life unanswered. But there are some clues in his epistle as to what he did after this point. Quote, I plan to do so when I go to Spain. I hope to see you while passing through and have you assist me on my journey there. 
after I have enjoyed your company for a while, end quote, Romans 15, verse 24. It is around this time, about 64 AD, that the great fire of Rome happened, of which Nero blamed on the Christians of Rome. Because of this, persecution in Rome grew strong over the next few years. In the year 67, the Jewish-Roman wars began. Paul is captured by Roman soldiers in the year 68 AD, where he is arrested and sent to prison in Rome. In prison, Paul writes his final letter to Timothy, in which he writes, quote, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. End quote. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6-7 through seven. Paul was executed under Nero in the summer of 68 AD. This concludes the life of the Apostle Paul, the book of Acts, and the first 50 years after the ascension of Christ. Thank you for watching.